Going green, a luxury only afforded during the boom times, because I'm beginning to wonder if that's what the condoms think. David Cameron famously boasted that his would be the, the greenest government ever just after seizing power. Uh, but then in October, his Chancellor George Osborne poured cold water on that when he boasted, uh, when he told a Tory conference rather, we're, we're not going to save the planet by putting the country out of business. Uh, since the condoms came to power in May 2010, they have expanded oil exploration in the North Sea, slashed investment in eco-energy firms, lowered carbon emission <laughs> targets, cancelled subsidies for things like loft insulation, which has slumped from a million homes a year to 70,000 a year. And what about future plans where we've got higher motorway speed limits maybe coming through, less cash for those who sell green energy back to the grid? Uh, that ain't going to do much for the planet. Nor, say critics, will a new airport slap bang in the middle of the Thames. And what about plans to build 10 new, up to 10, I should say, 10 new nuclear power stations within the next decade or so? And there's many other things we could talk about too. But to George and Dave, have any choice. I mean, the government may aim for 15% of our energy needs to come from renewable sources by 2020, but at present, well, we're far lower than that. North Seoul could, could plug the gap. Our carbon reduction targets were amongst the most ambitious in the world. Cameron and co wanted emissions reduced by 50%, if I'm right, by 2025. A target, they say, would have cost businesses £18 billion extra a year. Now they're aiming for 30%, which is in line with much of Europe. And while green investment is being slashed, can you justify propping up uh, eco-businesses when family budgets have never been under so much pressure, when unemployment's on the rise, and so on and so on, Caroline? I mean, it's, I mean, David Cameron's always talking about difficult choices, and I guess this is a difficult choice, the, the planet or well, I just think it's kind of a false choice as well. And one of the most frustrating things about this debate is that it's precisely through an investment in many of the green measures that this government is now slashing that we could get the economy going right again. Yeah. I mean, if you give the example of the, of the solar feed-in tariffs, this was a bit of support to the solar industry just until it becomes more competitive. Yeah. Just, you know, we've been supporting nuclear and fossil fuels for decades. You know, That's nuclear true. just wants it for very... Uh, renewables, we still are. Renewables want it for just for a very short time just to get competitive. And the government said, no, no, we can't afford it anymore. We're going to slash it. Now, this was an industry that in the last 18 months had created 25,000 jobs. It was reducing our emissions. It was getting the economy going. It was a win-win. And yet the government's just turned its back on it. And that's what's so frustrating. That nuclear power? So Can I ask you about nuclear power? I, mean, I, 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 I grew up in the era when it was a nuclear power nine danker, and now people are selling it to me as, well, it's, it's almost green. That's the, the great hope of the nuclear industry is to persuade us that, that nuclear energy is green. This is despite the fact that the nuclear waste remains radioactive for literally hundreds of thousands of years. We don't exactly know where we're going to put it yet, but don't worry, hopefully some sort of technology is supposed to sort it out. But you know, the strongest argument against nuclear, I think actually are the economic arguments. Yes, there are all the safety concerns and all of the environmental concerns, but also nuclear is massively expensive. Um, we subsidize it to, to a huge extent. If you look at you know, the disaster that was Fukushima, it's going to cost the Japanese billions, literally, to evacuate that area, to clean it up. The nuclear industry isn't paying for that. Taxpayers are paying for that. You can't in properly insure a nuclear power station because, you know, it's going to cost too much because the, the real cost is so big. We don't need it, is the bottom line. Investment in renewables, energy efficiency will get us there. But there is this massive gap between fossil fuel energies and renewable energies at the moment. And I, I, I have this suspicion that even if we poured more money in, the gap ain't going to close Look, quick enough. Well, you know, the bit we haven't talked about, of course, is also reducing our energy use through right. real energy efficiency measures. But if you put those three things together, energy efficiency and renewables and some decentralised energy as well, then we could get where we need to be. And it's not just me saying that. The government's own um, models on its, on its Department for Environment and, and Climate Change website show that there are ways of getting our emissions down and keeping the lights on without using so nuclear. So why, why have they turned their back on, on their pledge? What, what's, what's to be gained? Well, I know long gone are the days when David Cameron was hugging his husky. You know, he's got in for the husky now. If you're worried about the owl, you worry about the husky because <laughs> that's next on your list. Um, no, I mean, I think that when it comes to the energy debate, you know, it's really concerning how powerful the nuclear lobby is and they've managed to get themselves into some positions of, of influence. I've asked some questions actually about the number of people from fossil fuel and, and nuclear industry who are now inside the Department for Energy and Climate Change right, advising okay. government. Um, you know, that's really worrying. There was a, a, a leak of some emails after Fukushima between 
government officials and the nuclear industry talking about how they were going to try and massage the impression we were getting of Fukushima so it didn't uh, put off people from having really? nuclear power in this country. So, you know, it's, there's quite a lot of shady things going on in the background, quite frankly, to try to, you know, paint the picture that nuclear is safe and necessary when, in fact, neither of those things are true. Do you feel... I mean, there has been, or there seems to be, or it's only been reported that, that the public has uh, demoted environment as a priority in, in our own minds because of economic problems. Is that because we, we, we've been sold a pup again, that we, we've bought into a, into a load of nonsense, that, that we're making the wrong choices, that we... Sh I mean, how, how can you... you know, the public view has shown that the environment has slipped down our personal agendas. It's a real sort of chicken and egg, isn't it? Because it's also slipped off the, the media agenda. Yes. Um, and you, it's difficult to know well, w where did that come from? Was it the media that stopped focusing on it, which then made the public think, well, maybe it's not such a problem? It's, it's quite hard to, to get to the heart of why that is. It's certainly the case now that you've got more politicians, particularly people like George Osborne, saying we can't afford yeah. environmental measures. And when people are feeling, you know, incredibly hard pressed financially, quite understandably, they may quite understandably you know, take that argument. But the irony again is that if we were properly investing in energy efficiency, for example, and there is a program that the government's got to do that, but they need to put more money into it, that gets people's fuel bills down. You know, we've got five and a half billion households facing fuel poverty at the moment. That means they're spending 10% or more of their incomes on trying to keep themselves warm. That is a figure that's going up. And that is, you know, outrageous in the 21st century. We've got people literally dying prematurely because they can't afford to keep warm. So there is an agenda here that would mean that we could get our emissions down, sort out jobs, get people back working into the economy, uh, and keep people warm. You know, there are some, some possible win-wins out there. There aren't many in politics, but this is one of them. And it just feels such a tragedy that's not being pursued. Okay.